This video is to provide an awareness of the transport of lithium batteries and does not replace the need for dangerous goods or hazmat training. Lithium batteries power many products which we all use in our daily lives, such as mobile phones, tablets and laptop computers. These batteries contain more energy than many other battery types, allowing our electronic devices to run for hours or even days. Lithium batteries are very safe, but because of their high energy, if we don't treat them with care, or if we abuse them, they can catch fire. It is also very important that you only buy replacement batteries from reputable sources, as poor quality or counterfeit batteries have been the cause of a number of fires in the home, workplace and onboard aircraft. We will look at what can happen if lithium batteries are not transported in accordance with aviation safety requirements. We will also explain how you can help ensure that lithium batteries do not pose a hazard to flight safety. First, some terminology. A lithium battery is two or more cells which are connected together, for example a laptop battery. Some devices, such as mobile phones and watches, are powered by one or more individual lithium cells. Lithium batteries come in different shapes and sizes, but the most common technology for rechargeable electronic equipment is lithium ion. Similar rechargeable technologies, such as lithium polymer, are treated in the same way as lithium ion batteries when in transport. For portable equipment that's not rechargeable, like watches, lithium metal batteries are commonly used. Because portable electronic devices are so common, billions of lithium batteries are transported around the world, and this is expected to increase substantially over the coming years. Also, new technology allows batteries to contain more energy than before. This means it is even more important that lithium batteries are transported according to the rules. In recent years, we've seen a growing number of fire incidents involving lithium batteries, some of which had the potential to lead to the loss of an aircraft. Both lithium ion and lithium metal batteries can be dangerous if they are faulty, abused or not manufactured to international standards. That's why it's so important that you only buy lithium cells and batteries from reputable sources. Some batteries may look genuine, but as with this example, they may be counterfeit. Faults can occur if batteries are abused or damaged, for example by being punctured or dropped. To ensure they are safe for transport, all types of lithium batteries must pass stringent tests. Batteries which are not tested, for example counterfeit items, pose a significant risk to flight safety. Counterfeit, faulty and abused lithium batteries, and those which have not been protected against short circuit, can experience something called thermal runaway. This results in them getting so hot that they can catch fire and ignite other nearby batteries. Any fire on board an aircraft, particularly one involving lithium batteries, has the potential to be catastrophic. Cells or batteries that are defective for safety reasons or that have been damaged are forbidden for air transport as these are more likely to catch fire. Here we see the fierce fire resulting from 5,000 lithium ion batteries that were set alight for test purposes. In this test we see what happens when lithium metal batteries are ignited. Whilst the cargo compartments of passenger aircraft are fitted with fire suppression systems, these are not effective against lithium metal battery fires. The International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, determines the requirements to ensure dangerous goods, including lithium batteries, can be carried safely by air. These requirements are reflected in the International Air Transport Association, IATA, dangerous goods regulations and apply to lithium batteries in cargo or mail or when carried by passengers and crew. Correct packing, marking, labelling and documentation are essential to ensure lithium batteries can be carried safely. The transport requirements for lithium batteries shipped on their own depend upon their type, power and quantity. For small quantities of lower power cells and batteries, that is, lithium ion cells not exceeding 20 watt hours, lithium ion batteries not exceeding 100 watt hours, lithium metal cells with a lithium content not exceeding 1 gram, and lithium metal batteries with an aggregate lithium content not exceeding 2 grams, a lithium battery handling label must be displayed on the package. These cells and batteries will not be listed on the NOTOC. Packages containing larger quantities of lower power batteries will display the lithium battery handling label and a class 9 label. They are subject to an acceptance check and will be listed on the NOTOC. For cells and batteries with a higher power rating, that is lithium ion cells exceeding 20 watt hours, lithium ion batteries exceeding 100 watt hours, lithium metal cells with a lithium content exceeding 1 gram, 
and lithium metal batteries with an aggregate lithium content exceeding 2 grams, packages must be of UN specification and bear the Class 9 label only. These two are subject to an acceptance check and will be listed on the NOTOC. There are similar requirements for lithium cells and batteries contained in or packed with equipment, but no label is required when no more than two batteries or four cells of lower power are contained in equipment. State and operator variations must also be referred to as they may further restrict or prohibit the carriage of lithium batteries. From the 1st of January 2015, lithium metal cells and batteries not contained in or packed with equipment will be forbidden for carriage within cargo on passenger aircraft. Passengers and crew may carry lithium-ion batteries with a rating of up to 100 watt-hours. I've got a high-powered laptop battery with me. Can I carry it on board? Batteries up to 160 watt-hours or up to 300 watt-hours for a lithium battery removed from a collapsible mobility aid may also be carried, but only with the approval of the operator. Yep, that's fine for you to carry, although it will need to stay in your carry-on baggage. Lithium metal batteries with an aggregate lithium content not exceeding 2 grams may also be carried. It is recommended that portable electronic devices containing lithium batteries are carried in the cabin. If it is necessary for the device to be carried in the hold, it must be packed so that it cannot be turned on during transport, not packed loosely like the drill shown here. Spare batteries must be carried in the cabin, as this will enable cabin crew to deal with an incident should one arise. Batteries must be protected from short circuit, for example by being in their original retail packaging, by taping exposed terminals, or by placing the batteries in a plastic bag or pouch. Should it be necessary to transfer carry-on baggage to the hold, for example if a bag is too large or if approved storage locations in the cabin are full, it is important that passenger handling staff or cabin crew verify that the baggage contains no spare lithium batteries. Can I just ask, are you travelling with any electrical items or spare batteries? I have a spare battery for my laptop. OK, I'll just ask you to take that out and keep that on you and we'll check the bag in for you. Okay. Unfortunately, there have been occasions where incidents involving lithium batteries have occurred in the passenger cabin. Prompt actions of cabin crew and subsequent actions by the flight crew can avoid an in-flight fire becoming uncontrollable with potentially disastrous consequences. Therefore, it is important that cabin crew respond quickly. It's likely that you will first become aware of a problem by being notified by a passenger, although frequent cabin patrols may also help identify a problem at an early stage. Should a portable electronic device overheat or emit an electrical smell, instruct the passenger or crew member to turn off their device immediately. Disconnect the power supply if it's safe to do so, and turn off the in-seat power if applicable. The device must remain off for the duration of the flight, and must be kept in sight and monitored closely. Unstable batteries may ignite even after a device is turned off. There is also a risk of fire from a portable electronic device being inadvertently crushed inside an electrically adjustable seat. If a passenger advises that they have lost their device, ask them whether the seat was operated after the device was dropped. If it is known or suspected that the device has been crushed, consider the use of protective equipment when attempting to retrieve the item. Do not operate the seat electrically or mechanically in an attempt to find the device. If the device cannot be found, the passenger should be moved to another seat. Monitor their original seat for any signs of fire or smoke, and upon arrival seek the assistance of engineering staff to retrieve the device. In the event of a fire in the cabin, consideration should be given to the use of personal protective equipment, such as fire gloves and portable breathing equipment, in accordance with your operational procedures. However, these actions must not delay your response to the incident itself. The standard response for dealing with a portable electronic device fire is as follows. Move passengers away from the area and notify the flight crew of the incident. If flames are present, use an extinguisher to knock down and prevent the spread of fire. If applicable, isolate external power by unplugging the device or if unsafe to do so, switch off the supply to in-seat power systems. Cool the device with copious amounts of non-flammable liquid. The liquid is likely to turn to steam when applied to the hot battery. Monitor for any reignition. If smoke reappears, continue to use water or other non-flammable liquid. Ice must not be used to cool the device, as this will insulate it, causing adjacent cells of the battery to ignite. Do not cover or enclose the device, as this may have the same effect. 
Do not touch or move the device until you are absolutely sure it has cooled sufficiently and there are no signs of fire or smoke after monitoring for at least 15 minutes. This is because during thermal runaway, batteries may explode or burst into flames without warning. Once you are sure the device is safe to be moved, it should be immersed in water in a suitable container which should be stowed and, if possible, secured to prevent spillage. If the device was plugged into the aircraft power supply, ensure that power to all electrical outlets remains isolated until it can be determined that the system is free of faults. If smoke is seen coming from a baggage compartment, such as a wardrobe or overhead locker, move passengers away from the area whilst asking those nearby if they have anything that could account for the smoke. Identify the seat of the fire by checking for heat with the back of a hand. Discharge extinguishant into the locker, having considered the use of a smoke hood and protective gloves. Close the compartment and allow a few seconds for the extinguishant to take effect. If fire persists, apply further extinguishant until it is safe to open the compartment fully. The source of the fire must then be located. If a portable electronic device contained in a bag is involved, and there are no flames visible, and the bag is intact, remove and place the bag in a suitable container such as a toilet waste bin or fire containment bag and douse with water. Not all containers are watertight, so plastic bin liners should be used if necessary. The bag should not be opened if smoke or flames are evident, as the introduction of air may cause a flash fire. If the device is not in a bag, leave it where it is and cool it with copious amounts of water until there are no signs of fire or smoke. As we've seen previously, after monitoring for at least 15 minutes, the device should be immersed in water in a suitable container, which should be stowed and if possible secured to prevent spillage. After landing, the crew must advise ground staff where the device is stowed and make an appropriate entry in the technical log. The portable electronic device must be retained to allow inspection by incident investigators. Whilst a laptop has been shown, the response is essentially the same for any portable electronic device. However, for operations with only one cabin crew member, it may be necessary to combine some of these actions or enlist the assistance of a passenger. Refer to your emergency procedures manual for further information. An emergency suspected to involve lithium batteries carried as cargo should be responded to by following the standard operating procedure for smoke or fire events. It is imperative that you fulfil your role to ensure the transport of lithium batteries does not jeopardise the safety of an aircraft or its passengers and crew. If all of the rules are followed, it is extremely unlikely that you will experience any problems. More information on the carriage and shipment of lithium batteries is available from these sources.